The giant star Pollux is the closest giant star to the Sun. Castor itself also has many surprises, as we're about to find out. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Gemini twins, so let's get to it. In Roman folklore, Castor and Pollux were the twin sons of Leda. Leda was an Italian princess who became a Spartan queen. Castor and Pollux were born of different fathers. They are regarded as the patron saints of sailors, to whom they appear as Saint Elmer's fire. The twins are legends of horsemanship and are also emblems of immortality. Where might we find Castor and Pollux? Well, winter is an excellent time to see the stars as Gemini rises fairly high in the eastern sky. We first find the constellation of Orion and the large red star Betelgeuse. We follow across to Procyon, a very bright star in Canis Minor. What we do then is look directly northwards. Castor, Alpha Geminorum and Pollux, Beta Geminorum are the two heads of the Gemini twins. The first thing to realise is that these two stars, although they are the Gemini twins, are not actually next to each other. Pollux is 33 light years away and Castor 51 plus or minus another 3 light years distance from our own sun. So what about the sizes of the stars you might wonder? Well here's our sun as we can see in the bottom right hand corner. The first thing to know is that the Castor star system is not actually a star at all, but a system of 6. The first two stars are small red dwarfs, Castor CA and Castor CB, a binary pairing. And we realised that there's also Castor AA, a large A-class star with 2.6 solar masses. It also has a smaller red dwarf companion, also known as Castor AB, which is around half the mass of our Sun. Next is Castor BA, which is another A-class star with some 2.98 solar masses and 3.3 solar radii in size. This is the largest of the Castor system, and it too also has a smaller companion known as Castor BB. It is quite a complex system, isn't it? Finally, of course, Pollux. Pollux is a K-class giant, and at 9.06 solar radii, its luminosity is that of 37 suns, while its mass is just slightly under two solar masses. Here we see the complicated Castor system. Castor A on the right represents the binary pairing of Castor AA and AB. Castor B represents the binary system of BA and BB. These two pairings also have red dwarf companions, Castor C, which comprises CA and CB, which are orbit the main pairings in a huge elliptical orbit in around once every 10,000 years. What about the classifications of the stars though you might ask? Well we can see here our sun bang in the middle of the mainstream. Now, Castor CA, remember the Castor CA pairing? Well both stars are very similar to around 0.6 solar masses with very small luminosities of just 0.07 solar luminosities and are on the far end of the main sequence. Next, the Castor BA star, which is the largest of the system at 2.98 solar masses and 3.3 solar radii, has 60 solar luminosities. Interestingly, BA is a larger star than AA, but AA having a smaller radius, as we can see here, is actually hotter, which moves it slightly to the left on the main sequence. AA has some 2.4 solar radii and 58 solar luminosities. Now of course this video is not only about Castor, but also about Pollux. And of course Pollux, along with the Castor system, which to the naked eye is only one star, are known as the Gemini Twins. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to make it a bit more interesting. The approximate distance from Pollux to Castor is around 17 light years. So we will imagine a planet in the middle of these two, equally distant at around 8.5 light years distance to each. What might we see? Which would be the brighter of the stars? Let's find out. Here we see depicted a strange desert like world with huge dunes in the distance. We see the Sun at 9 light years would be plus 9 apparent magnitudes, so a bright star, but nowhere near as the brightest in the sky. The Castor CA star at just plus 4.85 magnitudes now is barely visible, you can just about make it out there. It's a little red dot. Pollux at minus 1.83 is extremely bright would be brighter than the star Sirius in our own skies. Castor AA at minus 2.46 and Castor AB at minus 2.49 are very similar in brightness and interestingly it's about the same brightness as Jupiter is from the planet Earth. However, once we combine all the Castor stars, which of course we can, their combined magnitude is around minus 3.23. We 
which would be an extremely bright star and far brighter than any extrasolar system body in our own skies. For reference, of course, the planet Venus at its brightest would be about minus 4.3, so the Castor system at 9 light years distance would by far and away be the brightest star in the sky. How about how far are the stars? Let's have a look at where they rank according to the famous stars that we have nearby. First of all, we see Alpha Centauri, Sirius the Dog Star, and Epsilon Eridani within 10 light years. F class star of Procyon follows, and then we have the G type star of Tau Ceti, which is actually the nearest single G class star after the Sun. Next follows Altair, and then the strange egg shaped Vega, the standard bearer star, and the southern hemisphere's Fomalhaut, both at a roughly 24 light years distance. Next, here is Pollux, which we can, as we can see is the first giant star in our local area. The star has actually drifted northwards, and as, as, lit as little as 2,000 years ago, lunar occultations still remain possible. Pollux's spectrum also served as one of the staple anchor points by which all stars are classified. Curiously, it also has one of the lowest magnetic fields ever recorded in a star, of below 1 Gauss. After Pollux, the next is the red giant star of Arcturus and then the multiplicity star system of Capella AA and AB. And finally, Castor AA and BA. Castor B is an AM star, which particularly strong spectral lines of certain metals. The final star on the list is the huge star of Aldebaran, and from here on in, as we see, only really giant stars can rank. Everything else comes in too faint. The true giant stars of our local neighbourhood them as we see Rigel, Betelgeuse, Canopus, Achenar Antares and Acrox are much further in distance than any of these stars, but much more powerful at the same time. So you might wonder then, where do Pollux and Castor rank on the brightest stars in the sky? So here we can see Pollux comes in at 18 with apparent magnitude of 1.14. Castor actually is as low as 25 and at 1.6 apparent magnitude. Gemini, of course, is the most northerly constellation in the zodiac. And it was only in 1719 when James Pan discovered that Castor was actually more than one star. Its centenary nature could be deciphered with a powerful telescope, so it might be worth checking it out but yourselves. Before we enter our final graphic, what we're going to do is we're going to take Pollux and the main Castor stars and move them as if they were to join a multiple star system with our own sun. We'll also move ourselves out to Pluto while we're at it to see what wonders we might see from this with this quadruple star system and whether we could survive on Pluto and how it would affect the Plutonian system. Here we see the sun shining on Pluto at minus 18.8. As we already know, it does illuminate Pluto to some degree, but offers precious little heating to Pluto's minus 230 degree surface temperature. Castor CA, of course, is even dimmer at minus 15.9 apparent magnitude and barely impacts the system at all. Finally, some lighting arrives as Castor BA rises at minus 23 magnitudes and begins to slowly awaken the Plutonian atmosphere. Castor AA is also around minus 23 magnitudes and is roughly the brightness of the Sun at planet Jupiter. The heating continues and Pluto's, fr Pluto's fragile nitrogen atmosphere begins to snow out and thicken. Pollux then eventually appears and adds minus 22.6 apparent magnitude, more brightness for the Plutonian system. Slowly we see Pluto with its now thickening nit nitrogen atmosphere, a river of water appearing and flows for the first time on the ancient surface of Pluto. Pollux, of course, does have its own planet known as Thestius. We don't know if rivers flow on Thestias, but it was confirmed in 2007 with 2.3 Jovian masses and a 590-day orbit, as it makes the system an interesting future target for exoplanetary telescopery. In Percy Shelley's 1818 poem, Pollux was referred to as mild Pollux, void of blame. The Castor system, with its two A-class and four M-class stars, is certainly a wonder to behold. Together, of course, they are the Gemini twins. Thanks for watching and congratulations for reaching this far. If you want more information on Castor Pollux or indeed Pluto, they are featured in these following videos. We look at 5 reasons why Pluto should be a planet and imagine Castor amongst other famous stars like Demir rising against city skylines in same skylines different stars too.
Don't forget, if you've enjoyed the video, to like and share, and even subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Stay safe in these difficult times. I'll see you on the next one.